guys, welcome to the next part of our Philippians video series. Today we are going to be going through Philippians chapter 4. We are on the very last chapter of the whole book. We almost made it completely through and it's been so good. So go grab your Bibles guys if you don't already have it with you. Because remember, like we say every single week, the Bible is the Word of God. It's alive, it's active, and it's the only book in the entire world that has the power to change us, me and you, from the inside out and teach us about the only absolute truth, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. So I am excited to jump in today. We are going to be starting actually in verse... Four of chapter 4. So verse 4 of chapter 4, if you want to flip to there. And to start, Paul, once again, just like we talked about a couple, couple weeks ago, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So two times he says to the Philippians, rejoice in the Lord rejoice in Jesus and remember rejoice it basically means to be filled with so much joy and and gladness and thanksgiving because of who Jesus is and what he's done for us now I want you to picture it like this okay for a second maybe this has happened to you guys maybe it hasn't but imagine you're at the beach Okay, and you're out swimming in the ocean, you're riding the waves, you're having the best time, and all of a sudden, you know, the waves, they start getting really, really intense and really, really big, and you're trying to swim and swim and swim, but you're not going anywhere. This actually happened to me once when I was a little kid, and you're swimming, but you're not going anywhere, and all of a sudden, you start drowning. Imagine that, you start drowning, and then all of a sudden, you hear the whistles going off, and a lifeguard comes swimming out to save you. And you're drowning, you're under the water, you're drowning, and he pulls you out of the water onto his boogie board, and he saves you. He saves your life. You swim back with him to the shore, and you are completely safe and okay. What do you guys think your family, your mom, your dad, you would be doing after that moment? You'd probably be a little shaken up because of what just happened, but you would be rejoicing. You would be thanking the lifeguard for saving your life. You would be so filled with happiness and joy because you were once drowning. You almost died and then the lifeguard came, pulled your hand out of the water and saved your life. Now I say this because this is similar to what Jesus did for us, except what Jesus did for us was even so much better than that. Guys, remember, each and every one of us, me and you, apart from Jesus, we are drowning, we are dead in our sins. Because remember, every single one of us sins, and sin is just anything that goes against the Bible that goes against what God wants for us to do. So lying, stealing, being disrespectful, being selfish, those are all examples of sin. And every one of us sins. The Bible tells us that we all fall short of the glory of God. God is perfect and we're not perfect. We can't be perfect no matter how hard we try. And because we all sin, that sin separates us from God forever for all of eternity we'd be separated from God because of our sin but because God loves us so so much he loves you so so much he sent his one and only son Jesus Christ to come and live a perfect life Jesus actually was God in a human body and Jesus he died on a cross for me and for you, taking the punishment of our sins onto himself. He had to die in our place. And then he was buried and then he rose from the dead three days later, defeating sin. And now he says, 
I'm offering you the forgiveness of sin. You can be completely forgiven of your sin. And I'm offering you the free gift. It's like a present of eternal life, meaning how we were once separated from God because of our sin. Jesus says now, if you believe in me, if you turn away from your sin and put all of your faith in me, in Jesus, you can be together with God again, be forgiven of your sins and go to heaven and be with Jesus forever. That is the good news. Jesus, he is almost like that lifeguard who went and saved that person that was drowning out of the water and saved their life. But Jesus, he saves our souls. We're drowning and dying and dead in sin. And if we believe in him with all of our heart, he comes and pulls us out of the water of our sin and pulls us onto the sand, onto stable ground. He is our savior. And now he asks us to, to follow him, to live for him, to love him. And man, when we do that, he completely changes our life from the inside out. So this is why Paul, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice because of this amazing news that Jesus died and saved us. And we should be so thankful and filled with joy if we know Jesus and if we have chosen to follow him because of what he's done for us, because of our future with him in heaven forever, man, it is the best choice that you will ever make. So anyway, he keeps going and he says, let your gentleness be known to everybody. The Lord is near, meaning Jesus, he's near. He's coming back soon. The Bible actually talks about that there, um, is a day that Jesus, he went back to heaven and that's where he is now, but he is coming back. And um, that's kind of like the end of the world, guys. Jesus is gonna come back. He's gonna take all of the people that, that live, loved him, that follow him, that believe in him, everyone who's truly a Christian. He's gonna take us with him and be in heaven forever. And then everybody who didn't choose to follow him um, won't be going there. They'll be destroyed, the Bible says. And he says, rejoice, let your gentleness be known to others, meaning let others see Jesus in you. Be gentle, be loving, represent Jesus so that people could see Jesus in you and want to know him for themselves because he loves everybody and he wants everyone to be saved. And then he says, be careful for nothing or be anxious about nothing but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus whoa all right so what he is saying is now you know, rejoice, Jesus saved you, praise God, be glad, show Jesus to everybody. He's coming back soon and he wants all to be saved. So we're now his witnesses, his representatives on the earth. And now he says, don't worry about anything. Don't be anxious about anything. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I feel worried about things. Sometimes I feel anxious about things, but Paul, he's telling them, number one, do not worry. Do not worry. And it's kind of like this. I have this backpack here. It's a really, really heavy backpack. It's probably like 50 pounds. Okay, guys? And... This is kind of like worrying. Imagine you had to walk around your school all day, every day with a 50 pound backpack on your back. You would get pretty exhausted and pretty tired, I'm sure. And you would have a hard time walking around in your school all day. Now this is what worrying does to us. 
and worrying. It's like we're carrying around this heavy backpack all day that weighs us down and it actually takes our eyes off of Jesus and puts them on ourselves. And remember, we've talked about in other videos that following Jesus is about not thinking about ourselves first, but it's about focusing on Jesus and focusing on others. But when we are anxious and worried, we're not trusting Jesus, rather we're trusting ourselves and it weighs us down and exhausts us. And what he says next in his verses, so do not be anxious or worry about anything, but in everything, prayer, by prayer, present your worries to God. So first he says, do not worry. The second thing he tells us to do is pray. Pray. Pray to God who loves you and cares about you and wants to take those worries off of your shoulders, off of your back. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna open up my backpack and I'm gonna start taking out all of these books that I have in here, which are all of the different things that I'm worried about, that I'm anxious about, that are weighing me down. So maybe you guys can relate. Maybe you're so, you're just worried about your family. Maybe, you know, you're worried about, you know, people in your family who are sick or, or people in your family who don't know Jesus or, you know, just all of these things going on at home. Maybe things with your parents, maybe things with your siblings, maybe you're thinking about them all day and they're, they're worrying you, they're making you anxious. So, ugh. I'm gonna take those books out. Now I have this card here in my little bucket that says peace from Jesus. So as we take out that worry and say, Jesus, you know, I'm worried about these people in my family. I'm, I'm really, I'm feeling anxious about this stuff going on at my house with my parents or my siblings. But I trust you, Jesus. I know that you are good. I know that you love me and you are for me. And I know that I can trust you. I give this worry to you. And I choose to fix my eyes on you, Jesus. And then it's like he gives us peace. So I'm gonna put this in my backpack, okay? Now maybe you're worried about all of this stuff that's going on in the world right now. I know it's probably weird being at school, having to wear a mask, um, and having to have all of these different rules, and everything's probably really different at school because of the coronavirus. And maybe that's stressing you out, maybe that's making you really anxious because you don't know what's gonna happen. Let's take all of that worry out. I got a lot more books in here. Okay, you say, Jesus, I'm worried about the virus. I'm worried about all of this stuff that is happening that I'm so not used to, that's never happened before. But Jesus, I know that you are in control. I know that you hold the whole world in your hands and that if I love you and choose to follow you, you will take care of me because you are so good. And no matter what happens, I know that I can trust you. And when we do that, He gives us peace. I'm gonna put this in our backpack. We'll do one more. So I have left my last big set of books. And maybe there's something else that you're worried about. Maybe you are worried about school or your friends. Maybe you're worried um, just about all of these tests or this work, homework that you have going on. Maybe something in school is just not cooking. Or maybe you're worried about what your friends think about you. You want to be popular. You want to have a lot of friends. You want people to like you. But, you know, maybe your friends are doing things that you know you're not supposed to do. And you want to trust Jesus and follow Jesus. And you don't want to give in to that temptation. But it's making you anxious because of what other people think. Take out that anxiety, lay it down and say, Jesus, I know that your ways are the best ways. Jesus, I know that you are the truth. 
you were the only truth and that you died in the cross to save me from my sin. And Jesus, I want to follow you and live for you. I don't want to live for sin, but I want to live pleasing to you. Would you help me, Jesus, to not give in to temptation and to stand out on your truth, even when nobody else around me is doing it? Would you help me to love you and follow you every single day? I give this anxiety to you in Jesus' name when we do that. He gives us peace. I'm gonna put this in my backpack. Now I'm gonna zip it up. Wow, it's so much lighter. It is not heavy anymore at all, and I would have no problem walking around school wearing this backpack because it's light. And all of that weight of worry and anxiety has been given to Jesus, and he has filled me with his peace that the bible says it surpasses understanding meaning like we in our own brains we can't even understand how we have this peace and it's only through jesus that we can have that peace and then he says that this peace that comes from him will guard our heart and our mind in christ jesus meaning this peace will protect us from sin. It will protect us from, from worry and from all of the things that try to take our hearts and our minds away from Jesus. Because remember guys, in this world there really is a spiritual battle. We talked all about this in our Armor of God series which is partly why some of the pieces of the armor of God, right, where the helmet of salvation that protects our mind and the breastplate of righteousness that protects our heart. And there's a battle between, you know, the enemy. He's trying to take our eyes off of Jesus, take our attention off of Jesus. And he's trying to get us to sin and worry and be scared and be anxious and do what everybody else in the world is doing. But if we know Jesus, if we believe in his sacrifice on the cross and we really have a relationship with him and know him, we know that we don't have to, to give in to these temptations. We don't have to do what the rest of the world is doing because we know the truth. We know the truth and the truth is Jesus. He tells us in his word that he is the way, the truth, and the life and nobody comes to the Father except through him. Meaning it's so important that we stand strong in the armor of God with our minds and our hearts protected with God's peace. We stand strong in that truth, despite what anybody else says, despite even what our teachers might say that seem, that seem different than what the Bible says. Because the truth is, guys, there's so many people all around us, whether it's people at school, whether it's even teachers or um, just other people in your life on the TV and the music that you hear that say things that are completely opposite of the Bible because they don't know the truth. Remember, they're in the darkness, and it's only through knowing the truth and believing in Jesus that we are in the light. So guys, I just encourage you this week, lay down that worry. The Bible says in another verse to cast our anxiety, kind of like if you are fishing and you have your fishing pole, you cast your line into the water to catch a fist. We are to cast our worry and our anxiety on to Jesus and say, Jesus, I trust you. You care for me. Help me to be filled with your peace and to follow you and to trust you no matter what happens because I rejoice in you because you are my savior. And I know that no matter what I go through in this world, no matter what happens to me, no matter all of the bad things that might even happen to me, I know that you are with me, that I can trust you. And one day it's gonna be completely worth it when I get to be with you in heaven forever if I don't give up. I love you guys so much. Pray, talk to Jesus this week, read your Bibles, because it is the very words of God and Jesus truly will speak to you 
and change you, transform you from the inside out, just like he's doing for me. I love you guys, and I will see you next time.